public service announcement. I wanted to apologize for being gone so long. Been seven months since I made a video, and that's not good for a content creator. Uh, it's not going to be passive. It's going to be all aggressive. It's your boy Eastwood, and it's Blue Nose Digital. And let's get to it. Earl Simmons, a.k.a. DMX. One of the greatest rap legends, icons in the game, period. I grew up on DMX. I came up in that era, that time zone, where you had to have your own energy, your own identity. And X had both. 72 to 74 million records sold. Uh, he, he, he had Jay-Z opening for him. He had the locks behind him. He had Eve. He was the man of Rough Riders. Uh, uh, real gut, uh, grimy grit. Uh, 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 strong, like, underground flow. He wasn't never trying to be that commercial or industry type of uh, 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 artist. And I think that's where sometimes he was targeted. You know, he was definitely in a billionaire conversation. He wanted to come back, but I wanted to wait because it was talks after he died from his heart attack. Or he, he had went to a coma from his heart attack that he wasn't dead. He was brain dead and all he wasn't coming back. They didn't know like the media or none of the news outlets knew what was really going on. It was mixed feeds coming in. So, But we back. This Blue Nose Digital. It's your boy. And I just wanted to say a uh, salute to the icon. He's made his ascension. We're going to keep moving forward. But we love you, X, and all the music that you put out. And like I said, this your boy Eastwood and this Blue Nose Digital. This is Eastwood, it's Blue Nose Digital, co-host, my son, my baby, the junior, and we're here to discuss the major topic that's going on in Minneapolis, Minnesota, actually in Brooklyn Center. A young black man by the name of Dante Wright was killed uh, by uh, Officer Kim Porter, Potter. Um, during a traffic stop, basically by some air fresheners that was in the mirror. So, we're going to kick this off right. This is the first show coming back to the platform. But we're going to kick it off right and we're going to talk about some things. And especially about this. So, son, let's expound on what's going on right now. Let's say you take it from here. We're going to get it in. Well... Well, start off, um, if you guys have seen the video, uh, how they perceived the situation was totally, in my opinion, unprofessional. Because as many ways how they could secure him from getting back inside the car and driving up, trying to drive up in the first place. And um, Potter, um, Kim Potter, she could have done anything else but to pull out her weapon, which she thought was her taser in the first place. So, right. Yeah. Right. So, Kim Potter, we watched the video, Kim Potter pulls out uh, her gun and discharge, but she's thinking, or they're saying taser in the background. The taser's on the left side of her waist. The waist of the officers, as we noticed in the video. But she has a gun out immediately. And this is my uh, take on that. It's subconscious. And what I mean by that, she already has it in her mind to pull out her service weapon at all times. Yeah. And that's what she did. Especially with the threat of a young 
black male. And, and remind you, she's been on the force for at least 26 20, years. 26 years, yeah. You got 26 years of training, but you acting like a rookie. You performing like a rookie. You performing in being scared. And that's what happens with a lot of them. They performing out of being scared. Or they performing out of a slight subconscious of hatred. It's hard to detect mental illness in anybody. I'll say that. Uh, it's a it's a it's a thing uh it's been going on and, and, and this 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 the part I want to really get to. And this is the part I really want to expose in this situation. We ain't even got over the Chauvin or the George Floyd for police to transvert right back to this type of business. But I can't even say transvert. Or transfer back because even after George Floyd died, that was so uh, 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 catastrophic that it was other situations going on when black men and black men was dying, black women was dying all through the country after George Floyd. But the George Floyd was so much coverage that you, we we couldn't even hear a lot of it. It was a guy at a restaurant. Um, I don't know if it was Wendy's and. Uh, the police gunned him down like a few weeks after the George Floyd. So, I think, you know, with, 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 with this situation, it's a training that they have. And the training is subconscious and is deeply rooted in a form of hatred that they call it policing. See what I'm saying? It's disguised in policing. It's covered and wrapped up in it. Uh, they have actually, uh, I had got from uh, uh, Tariq Nasheed. He's, uh, he was the producer of the movie uh, Hidden Colors, all the documentaries. And uh, I, I watched his Twitter and he actually uh, had an article about the warrior style training of policing. And it, it, it requires them to have like a green beret type of style and it's like a kill out a killology man mentality and right here in Minnesota they was performing this training Mayor Fry is uh, one of the ones who like uh, tried to deviate it but it's still offered to any police that want to take on that special type of training we got to understand too you know like I, I mean if people want to protest want to march that's cool and they want to march against the police the reaction of the police but I think we're marching or we're protesting it's a wash rinse and repeat it's been going on since the 60s uh, I, 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 I'm not with it and then if we're going to do something why are we reacting to those that hire the police the hierarchy who's hiring these people that's coming from rural areas that have no connection to blacks, Latinos, no urban connections. A lot of them police growing up didn't have urban connections. A high percentage of them, I don't know the percentage, but a high percentage of them didn't have urban connections. You know what I mean? Like urban inner city connections. They didn't. You can see the reactions. You can see how they move. That their interaction is 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 vague. Now in Minnesota, which is the highest state for biracial, interracial relationships, we also have a lot of police shootings. It's been going on for a long time, but now thanks to social media and cameras and everything, now it's being visually documented. But I don't stop at the police; they the bottom of what you would call racism or white supremacy. I say we need to go to the top of the ladder. We need to kill the head of the snake. You keep you keep cutting off an arm, another arm gonna grow. You keep cutting off a toe, another toe gonna grow. It's all it's gonna keep doing. And that's all we do. And those, I'm gonna let you talk, but those that are in power, the white academia, the uh, boule, whoever you may have, when they come forth, 
All they is is about a check. They're not performing the correct duties to get to the root of the problem and, and, and destroy or discipline that problem. They ain't doing that. We got to realize that. It's wash, rinse, and repeat. Um, well, first off, I felt like at the beginning of it, they did they did kind of their job, you know? Right. And then starting goes goes along. When, once he tried to escape, I mean, what's he shouldn't have because there was police everywhere. Right. I, I don't believe pulling out your um, weapon should be your first, like, defense or offense or whatever. Um, You should have tried to, like, at least... There is tons of options you should have gone along with. You should have tried to pull him out or, like, grip him more. Exactly. Like, and get him away from the car first. And then, but, like, it was just... The whole um, body cam showing us was just unprofessional. At 26 years, we talking. Not no rookie. We talking 26 years. Right. And you don't know the difference between your gun and a taser. Yeah. I would like to uh, make a public service announcement on this one. Kim, uh, you are retarded. I think there's, I think there's two things like mentally with with the cops. There's um, a mandate, which is like their jobs and um, obligations to uh, to serve um, to serve within your community or whatever. Okay. And then there's a domestic mandate, which is like domestic. I mean, like uh, their interactions with black people, because they're automatically assuming if right is. If they're pulling over a black person, that there's like, they're like animals, you know, and right. they need to be contained. And right. They're the, they're the opposite to the order. They're the order the order list, and you know that's how they're subconsciously so been. And in in my opinion, I'm kind of like I haven't like seen much of the marching, like not much as you have, but in my opinion, I'm kind of like getting tired of it. I am so glad that y'all listen to me and my son for a brief second. We're going to come with more content, deeper interviews. So subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, drop a comment. It's your boy, Eastwood, Blue Nose Digital.